Hey everyone, Zach here. Today I'm going to walk through how I go about doing configuration as code for the authenticators and authenticator maps in AP 2.5. So if you're using configuration as code, some things have changed a little bit with the 2.5 upgrade where we now have the gateway component. And there's a lot of good stuff out there. I just wanted to walk through my process because it's, it's made it a lot simpler for me to make the transition. And the example I'm going to use is an LDAP authenticator. So in my platform, uh, I've already got it set up. So for you, you may actually go to this create authentication button here. And the way that I like to go about it is actually to manually set it up initially and then pull the configuration from the API to use as my config as code. And then any future minor modifications become a lot easier. Uh, so sometimes I don't necessarily need to go back into the UI, make a minor change pull the new config and copy it over. Um, it can be a lot easier moving forward to just make it straight up in the configuration. But for that initial setup, where there's a lot of variables, a lot of things that we're configuring. For me personally, I like to go through the UI because it's step-by-step step, and then just pull it out. So for today, um, when you might create, create authentication, I'm gonna go ahead and click on an existing one and go to edit, which is a very similar view. Uh, but just for the sake of the time, I already have some of the things filled out. Like I mentioned, I'm using LDAP in my example. So I've got my server URI, um, I've got my bind distinguished name and password that I'm using, and then my group types. If I scroll down here, I'm specifically specifying the name attribute for my groups, um, a group search query. Uh, if I scroll down again, user attribute maps. So this will be mapping kind of the attributes on the LDAP side of things to the attributes within Ansible Automation Platform. And then finally, a pretty important piece here is LDAP user search. Uh, so this is gonna be where within my directory I'm gonna be searching for users um, based off of a user input to the login screen. And there are a couple of flags here. So enabled, obviously, is this enabled or not? The ability to create objects, right? So if I have mappings that would map a user to an organization or a team, if that org or team doesn't exist, uh, should it create those objects? And, and for me, it's yes and then remove users. So that would be like if an existing user of the platform logged in via this authenticator and had roles or team membership or even organization membership that no longer applied, should it be should this user be removed from those? Um, and in my case, and I think in most situations, probably yes, but maybe not. Um, so that's the initial setup. If we keep going to our mappings. Um, this is a fact effectively going to determine what permissions does a user have once they have logged into the platform um, or once they have effectively been found in whatever the authenticator is. So the first one here is I have a, an allow login. Um, so this is kind of my kind of entry point into my maps. Uh, they're processed in order. So for me, uh, I basically am limiting it to a specific set of groups. You can see here I've got the full name. Um, to the group in LDAP. And I'm basically saying if it's if the user is a member of any of these groups, uh, they're allowed to log into the platform. And if we scroll down, I have additional maps here. So then I look at some organizational membership, right? Um, so if they're a member of any of those groups, they are automatically placed in an organization that I'm calling LDAPers, right? Uh, I keep scrolling down. I then have it broken down by team, right? So I, this is a lot more specific where the networking Ansible group members go into the network LDAPers team. Um, and I also have a specific rule that says if um, they're in the network LDAPers administration, administrators group, they get admin uh, privileges. Um, you can see here, right, with the role. So if we keep going, right, there, I have a ton of mappers based off of this particular uh, authenticator. Um, and I can continue to add, right? Those are gonna be applied after the user has been found um, and has a valid login. And that will determine you know, where they land within the platform, what orgs they're part of, what teams they're part of, and what roles they have. Uh, so if I click next, can also adjust the order here. Uh, if you take a look at the blog post, I go into a bit more detail, but like I mentioned, these are gonna be processed um, top down um, or in ascending order. Um, so you know, allow login would be number one and then organizational membership two and so on. Um, and the last thing here is just a review. 
Um, so we could scroll through and see all the different mappings we have. I'm going to go ahead and click finish. And that would be kind of the initial setup for me to go through that, create everything I want manually um, and save it. And then I can go back to authentication methods. And I'm just going to hover over here, depending on your browser. Uh, you may want to take a look at the, the, the URL as well. But for me, it, it popped up at the bottom there. I can see the authenticator ID is actually two. Um, so it's in the URL. I'll show it a different way as well. So we see that authenticators and then the number two. Um, that's going to be useful for me. So the way I'm going to pull from the API is I like to use Postman. So I'm going to open up Postman. Uh, and I already had this set up. So the one setup piece that I would uh, make sure you uh, know how to do is, you know, you're creating the full URL here. So you're able to use variables. This is my base URL. Um, and then my API gateway version one authenticators. And then that ID that I was looking for in the URL. So you would replace that with yours. And the other thing in Postman specifically, um, so it could be different. You could curl this if you're familiar with curl on the CLI and that's more comfortable. Um, you just do need to provide a bearer token. So that token can be generated in the platform. Uh, if you go into the user section and click on your user, uh, there'll be a tokens uh, section where you can create a token. So that gives me access to the API. Uh, I'll go back here. I'm just gonna do a git. I did it again there. And so this is my output, as you can see. Um, if I scroll down here, there are a lot of things you can notice here that feel familiar, right? So if you look at the Ansible platform authenticators module and the configuration is code collection, these parameters are going to match up very nicely. Um, and so what I can do now is basically take this payload and I will have to clean it up and sanitize it a bit, right? So like modified and modified by, um, oh, those, those properties don't matter to the configuration as code. Uh, but for the most part, I can take this payload, if I copied it, right, I could put it in a text editor or ultimately I do need to convert it to YAML um, uh, to keep it consistent with my playbooks. Uh, but even more specifically, you'll see that configuration section. This is kind of the meat of what we're doing here. Um, and this is why I like to do it first manually versus trying to like get this configuration payload perfectly correct and type it in manually. Um, just do it in the UI and pull it out. Um, so if, if I skip ahead to what it looks like once I've, you know, just copied this payload, cleaned it up a little bit and gone over into my repository where my configuration code exists, you'll start to see, right, that familiar construct, right? So this is straight out of the API. I've got that configuration property and then I sanitized out some of that extra data. I have those three flags we talked about. Uh, the order of the authenticator itself, right? So this isn't the mappings, but the actual authenticator. Um, because I may have more than one LDAP authenticator, I may have a SAML authenticator. Um, that, that piece is flexible. And then other properties that are also available in uh, the Postman output, right? So just kind of marrying that up with the ansible.platform.authenticator module uh, for creating your configuration as code. Um, and then additionally, there's our authenticator maps, right? So we created all of those maps and we'll also want to have that in our configuration as code. So very similar process if I go back to Postman and I have another thing set up where it's actually a very similar URL. We're just going to add slash authenticator maps, hit send, and we'll get a list of authenticator maps and it'll have a, a results a results list. So scroll down here to this particular map. You'll see here we've got the map type, um, the role, the organization, the team, um, triggers. And if we kind of look, this is one significant individual one. So if we take a look back over at VS Code, um, you'll see how it kind of maps over to the YAML output, right? So we've got, instead of the authenticator, which in the payload was an ID, you can actually specify by name and configuration as code. Um, we've got the map type, the name, the order, um, organization, and then, you know, some of the additional properties. So just to kind of sync that back up, I'll go back over to Postman um, and you'll see this is a different map itself, but you'll see there's a triggers groups has and. I scroll down to the next one, we'll have triggers groups has or. 
right? So basically taking that output and then putting it back into the configuration as code for both your authenticator and your authenticator map. Um, and then you can basically have what I have here where I have my variables files, um, where I have the specific variable names that the um, infra.configuration collections expect so that I can run my configuration as code against the platform. Uh, and same here with authenticators. And I can have additional, right? So in here I showed you the Autodots LDAP that I was walking through, but I have another one for Okta. Um, and this will just allow me, of course, if anything happens, you know, maybe a DR situation, um, I have the ability to recreate all these resources automatically. Uh, I also have my playbooks written with tags. So, or sorry, the, the collection itself supports tags. So I can also run my configuration as code playbook, which I have an example in the comments, and I can specify a tag that will actually only apply the authenticators. Um, so that's a good way if I'm making changes and I don't want to rerun my entire configuration as code, uh, I can do it here as well. So I hope you found that useful. Uh, if I go back to the platform itself, um, just to prove to you that I did really set up LDAP, um, I have a user here called user01 in my directory tree, and I should be able to log in. And I, the URL was trying to take me to a page I don't have access to, so let me go to the dashboard. And I can go to users, and I should be able to see who I just logged in as. I mean, I got this particular user was a member of the networking group, so I got put on the networking team. Um, and from a roles perspective, let's see, it is a team admin, so also was in the team admin group. And we can confirm by going over, sorry, to our L, my LDAP server. Let's go to LDAP browser, take a look here. Um, I know this user is going to be in networking because they're on the networking team. Um, and we also see there's some groups here. And let's see, I'm guessing user one. Uh, if there was an easy way. Yeah, we have unique member user one, right? So it makes sense that that user got put into the team admins uh, on the Ansible Automation platform side of things. So if you found that helpful, um, if you're trying to walk through that process um, and uh, if you have any questions or, or maybe some other suggestions for how to go about it, I'm open to um, and happy automating. Thanks for listening.